thank you everybody for taking the time out of your busy schedule to spend some time with us during the busy holiday season today to talk about the story of strategic business relationship management and IT operations at the University of Lincoln. We have with us Tim Ingham. He's head of ICT operations at the University of Lincoln and an early adopter of the Convergence BRM, digital BRM tool set. Also with us uh, is myself. I'm John Cloyce III. I'm vice president of sales and marketing for Excalibur Data Systems. We are the exclusive distribution and services partner for the Solertis Convergence Digital Solution here in North America. I'm a business relationship management professional with extensive experience in ITIL and service management. I was the 2012 ITSMF USA Member of the Year and also an ambassador for the Cloud Credential Council, creating vendor agnostic cloud standards for training and certification program. Also with us is Simon Kent. Simon is the Chief Innovation Officer and co-founder of Solertis. Uh, and has created the di Convergence Digital Toolset. Simon was awarded the 2016 BRM Trailblazer Award by the Business Relationship Management Institute. Also a BRMP with a strong background in ITEL and a long-standing Sharewell software partner with 20 years of experience in service management and customer experience, and help desk, and a plethora of IT-related areas. And the star of our show today is Mr. Tim Ingham. Uh, Tim, as I mentioned, is head of ICT operations at University of Lincoln. Um, very into neuro-linguistic processing. And if you had seen the invitation, you probably know that Tim is a Doctor Who guru uh, fan. So much to the point that he actually got to guest appear on the Doctor Who show. I'm going to take about a minute and 20 seconds to let you get a taste of uh, Tim's appearance. I'm gonna stop you, Septim. I will paralyze you and take your brain. Get out or I'll shoot. I'll shoot first. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. You'll die, Sautil. You'll die, Captain Jack. Die now and die forever. Um, John? What are you doing in here? Everyone's got home. I was just showing a friend of mine around the TARDIS. My name is Sal Till. It's Tim. I'm from Aminupia. Stoke on Trent. Well, I, I was just heading home. Do you want to lift? No, 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 fine. I'm, we'll tidy up. <laughs> oh, and John, another thing. Yeah. My daughter's. So sorry. Sorry. Good. Uh, I have to admit, I am a little less blue this afternoon than I was in that clip, but nevertheless, it's always good to hear that. Uh, Again, it has been a few years since I uh, travelled in time and a little bit less sedate story today about the story of strategic BRMs and IT operations at the University of Lincoln. So just to give you a little bit of background to Lincoln and the University of Lincoln, we are based in the sort of East Midlands, east side of the UK. Uh, for any of our American listeners, uh, Boston, where the Pilgrim Fathers sailed from is about 20 minutes drive from where I currently am and is actually in the county of Lincolnshire. Uh, the University of Lincoln was founded in 1996 and we've only just celebrated our 20 year anniversary. So we're a relatively young university when you compare to such institutions as Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, with that in mind, this kind of gives you a bit of a breakdown of the current student numbers and staff numbers that we support. Uh, being a young university, we focus primarily on undergraduate students, as you can see from the figures there. But we're also looking to increase our postgraduate research and international student base, with international students now, I think, coming from many countries, including such far, far flung points as South America. Academic and support staff is quite evenly split. 
I think if you've you've got anyone listening who is working in higher education, I'm pretty certain it will be the same around the world as it is in the UK. We're quite lucky in the sense that we get to, effectively, we know who our customers are and we know when our busiest periods are going to be. So demand management becomes not easier, but it becomes a little bit more easy to understand during the year when we're going to be busy. Uh, newest student intakes in September, October, this time of year and the summer, it goes from busy to quiet. So we know that we're going to get a high number of student inquiries to our service desk in the autumn. Likewise, like I say, this time of year and the summer, it goes quieter in one element, but strategic projects are likely to be implemented over these quieter periods for business as usual operations. That said, that being said, although it, it is easier sometimes because we know who our customers are, those kind of four groups of people you see there, undergraduate students and academic staff and support staff, all have very different and diverse requirements. So academic staff versus maybe staff in HR and finance, the traditional support elements will have very different requirements. And we as an ICT team, as an IC department, have to try and meet all those requirements while still fundamentally meeting the objectives of the university. Uh, the ICT department in the University of Lincoln is quite a small department really compared to a lot of other institutions in, in our sector. It's split into three teams. You've got technical services, where, which is where I'm from. That is your traditional core service desk, first line, second line, third line teams. The 80 members of the information services team, they are kind of back-end developers and uh, uh, sort of business system specialists. And the project management office does exactly what it says on the tin. They are project managers delivering strategic projects and programs for the ICT and the university. Being such a small team, we have to kind of effective, effectively wear different hats and uh, do many different roles above and beyond what we are there, what our core responsibilities are. I, my core responsibility is around service delivery, yet I'm also recognized as the ITIL problem manager. Our service desk team leader, she's obviously the leader for the service desk doing first line support, but she's also recognized as the ITIL incident manager. And the members of our PMO, not only are they project managers, but they also are involved in the, our current BRM function. They are our business relationship managers. So we have to bear this, this in mind that quite a lot of people in ICT have very different uh, pools on their time and thus we're always looking for ways to improve our efficiency and looking at ways that we can help this kind of uh, de demand on ICT resource within the university. So what you're going to see today is our current story with the way we integrated BRMs and operations. Now this is by no means the end of the story, this is only the first three chapters and I, I believe this story will continue certainly into 2017. So chapter one will be, is entitled How, Why and Blue Skies. This is kind of the foundation. This is what went on in the past, how we got to where we are today, and certainly how, the, how everything developed from the concept to fruition. Chapter two is Thank You Birmingham. I always have to say at this point, someone has to thank Birmingham, but there is a real reason why we thank Birmingham in the UK for getting us on the journey to convergence. And chapter three is Convergence Countdown. This is what went on this year when myself and Simon came together to effectively install and uh, implement the product. So, chapter one. Uh, how, why and blue skies. Uh, the, where this journey all started, it actually kind of started in well, it's, it, the end of 2013. It was about this time, 2013. The University of Lincoln does a biannual staff survey and asking all staff various questions related to fundamental workings of the university. Uh, we got the results the following year in 2014 and as a result uh, we in ICT we created a number of working groups to tackle various different not issues but different subjects that were raised. So for instance a ICT communications group were was created 
and uh, a process improvement group was created and also a blue skies group was created now the the, the phrase blue skies like a lot of this kind of business uh, vocabulary can make people cringe and I have to admit it did make me cringe a little bit but essentially it was a group that was there to discuss uh, new ideas new technologies new initiatives without kind of the boundaries we currently have in our sort of w working days business as usual so everyone from the ICT director to myself to technicians that are on the ground represented in this group and one of the questions that came up in this quite early in this uh, working group was is there a way of recording conversations that happen outside of our traditional meetings so outside of ITSM tickets outside of project meetings project plans and outside even of BRMs and sort of minuted meetings because there were a lot of conversation going on with ICT a lot of feedback being given that wasn't being recorded in any real form at all and as we got discussing more one of our technicians uh, used a phrase he referred to it as corridor kidnapping where a conversation would normally be started with oh why are you here or wouldn't it be good if uh, the example he gave was he was in the queue for the canteen and someone he knew tapped him on the shoulder and said wouldn't it be good if ICT could put a, a big TV up on the wall so I don't have to walk into the canteen every morning to see what's on the menu now this conversation didn't really go anywhere we didn't put a TV on the wall and it, it wasn't really a formal piece of feedback it was just a conversation and we kind of discussed is it would it be is it possible what we've got would it be possible to actually m map out and log these kind of conversations that in, and, and, and discuss them and see whether there's any kind of need to progress them any further we looked at our current ITSM tool at the time which was Zendesk and we felt that it didn't really have the capability to do what we were looking for we discussed maybe using CRM tools but then we will be going down a path of effectively having another tool on top of our ITSM tool that really wasn't the best practice way of doing things and we looked at SharePoint and spreadsheets but really didn't come to any real concrete answer to this question and we didn't really implement any solution it, it was something that was effectively not forgotten about it was a conversation that was parked pending further investigation to see if there's anything out there in the future that might actually be able to achieve that now at the same time as these working groups we were all, we were working in technical services certainly beginning of 2014 right the way through that year and answering one of the age-old questions that a lot of us seem to forget from our day-to-day -day, uh, work and that is the question of why are we here what is ICT here to do because uh, it became apparent from the feedback from the team that a lot of people didn't really identify with the strategic objectives of the university they knew, knew what they did on a day-to-day -day basis they knew what their day job was but they didn't see how their day job affected the goals that the university had set itself so we did a lot of work in team meetings around effectively coming up with a mission statement to actually right to, so to put down in writing why are ICT here what are we here to achieve for the university so we've quite easily been been able to identify about bringing quality of education to students about students getting their degrees and things like that but we never really seem to be able to quantify some of the smaller aspects of it around the business support function certainly around research and postgraduate education there was a lot of mystery and people couldn't relate to those objectives that the university had set itself so we we tried really hard certainly through 2014 and actually moving into 2015 to make that our priority with our support teams is to get them to identify more with the university and its sort of strategic objectives this moves into uh, chapter two and that's again thank you Birmingham this work sort of carried on like I say from 2013 2014 into 2015 and linked with that was the development of our BRM function now prior to being an operations manager I was the service desk team leader and I have to admit that I had a negative viewpoint when it came to our BRMs what 
I used to see, what my team used to see, certainly from the output from BRMs, was ticket chasing, uh, feedback chasing, uh, kind of the answering the question, why hasn't this been done? And I didn't really see, and actually, I'll be honest, I didn't really see what the benefit of a BRM was. And it wasn't until I actually became to be operations manager and I saw things from the other side that I realized I could see really quickly what the benefits of a BRM in the university was. Fundamentally, like I'm sure a lot of people know, is to understanding your customer, understanding what your customers' needs are and how you as an ICT function can help them deliver their needs. Essentially, it's bringing value to the business. I didn't see all that from my time in the service desk, but I certainly was able to see it as I moved into this position. However, I did see, and certainly attending some of those early meetings in BRMs, a lot of time wasted talking about very mundane operational things. Uh, one meeting springs to mind where I was sat opposite three very uh, senior respected individuals whose salaries probably together equated about £150,000 and we were there discussing why a desktop printer hadn't been serviced in a timely fashion. Now granted that was very important to them and their staff but I felt that it was not relevant for that forum and for the people certainly around the table it wasn't a relevant conversation it needed to be had but it needed to be had in a different forum so following on from that experience and, and others I discussed with colleagues and we effectively split the uh, BRM function from just a simple strategic BRM we split it into strategic BRMs on one side and operational BRMs on another one side dealing with the high-level uh, strategic contacts in the university and one side dealing with operational contract contacts who are on the ground who are dealing with the day-to-day -day business as usual functions so they would be things like university academic school technicians ICT representatives or just simply support staff representatives who are nominated to discuss operational activities and immediately we could see the benefits of this uh, one example is uh, with one of the schools in the university we, we didn't have a good relationship with them and that was mainly down to understanding we didn't understand what they did on an operational level and likewise they didn't understand how we did things and by actually getting the operational contacts in a room effectively for two hours we put names to faces we built relationships and we, we were able immediately to iron out the kinks that were there and the relationship has been a lot better since that meeting many I think it was two years ago now this those operational BRMs still are there and still produce some really good results so 2015 I attended the Service Desk Institute conference uh, it's worth doing a cheap plug for the SDI I, I do believe they are actually international as well as UK focus I know they had a conference I think quite recently in Mexico uh, they do some wonderful things around service desk focused uh, customer service and uh, uh, ITIL and service improvement we always try and attend their conference and so in 2015 it's a standard conference it had a the IT service and support awards so it's a black tie thing you go and uh, people are nominated for awards as you would expect from any conference award ceremonies and we were put on table with another group of individuals who I believe were from Aberdeenshire County Council now they were there too they were nominees for one of the awards during the night and I was sat on a table next to a gentleman called Simon Kent uh, for the benefits of people looking at the photo now I'm in the bottom left hand corner and Simon is immediately to my right chance conversation uh, you put you you kind of look back at it now and you think that any other table any other night we might have been sat somewhere else but me and Simon we got talking during the evening about ITSM IT operations uh, BRMs and I was explaining him some of the things we'd done around our blue skies groups and about answering the why we are here question and I said to him look there, there isn't a tool out there that can actually uh, link up strategic objectives with operational work there isn't anything out there that can log these conversations and Simon actually said to me he said well actually there is and we're developing it and you, again you kind of look back and you think had I not attended that event we might not, never never have crossed paths but 
it answered the questions that we've been looking for effectively for two years and I was really interested and kept in contact with Simon over 2015 because at the same time uh, ICT University were looking for an ITSM replacement for Zendesk and like a lot of things in higher education and public sector in the UK it's not a simple process of just going out and purchasing something we have to go through various checks and balances through procurement and we had to do effectively an options appraisal and go and look at all the tools so it wasn't just for tick in the box paperwork benefit but it was also for us because we needed to understand what we wanted from an ITSM solution so uh, Chill were on that list, Heat, Land Desk, all the big names you'd expect and as you'd expect a lot of them are very similar and during this process options appraisal uh, Simon demoed to me the convergence tool and this quote comes up quite, re quite a lot in his uh, material and that actually did happen I do spend some of my time running down corridors getting excited about ITSM and I really should stop running into my director's office to discuss these things but yes that generally did happen Simon showed me the demo of the tool and I went back to my director and said do you remember those conversations we had many moons ago about uh, linking up strategic objectives with uh, operational activities there is a product out there that now can do it so we added this to our options appraisal it became another line another sort of tick in the box to see whether other products would do the same because of course Solotis at the time was linked with Cherwell and we went away in uh, to the end of 2015 to effectively select a tool thankfully for uh, for me we did actually select Cherwell uh, it was on other elements other than just link linking up with Solotis I have to point out there were lots of elements around ITSM that we found very useful and very unique with that product however as with many things in uh, again higher education and public sector we went one step further rather than just implementing the tool as a technology we looked at culture change and process change and thus the time it took from purchasing Cherwell to actually implement, implementing it actually took another year because we actually went back to basics and looked at incident management, problem management, change management and changed a lot of our processes at the same time. So that gave us a lot more time to think about how we wanted to do things and also as well allowed the new university strategy to be launched this year which actually proved to be quite beneficial for the phase three of this process which was the installation of the tool moves quite nicely on to chapter three uh, this was a countdown to conversion this happened over the summer of this year uh, obviously going uh, purchasing Cherwell we were able to also go ahead and uh, acquire the convergence tool through Salertis and as part of that uh, Simon said he would come on site to install the product now if anyone who works in IT knows you get a consultant on consultant on site they stay for about seven days they drink you out of tea and coffee and spend a heck of a lot of time configuring and tweaking a product I can say I was ridiculously impressed that this product took 60 minutes to install within one hour the product was up and running and within one hour we were immediately linked to our new strategy within our ITSM tool. This is a screenshot here of what you see through the uh, Solotis tool and what you see there are the five business objectives or strategic objectives for the university that were imported during that process. You can drill down into these uh, a bit further and actually see who owns these kind of things and things like that but for the benefit of this presentation I just thought you'd give you an overview that again within 60 minutes these business objectives were already linked into ITSM tool which would have allowed our technicians to see that from effectively from go live uh, like I say that was installed immediately we also had something that I would not considered uh, with regards to the install we brought our university's enterprise architect on board because as part of his role in university he would already mapped out many if not all of the business processes associated with ICT and non ICT products so a chance conversation there allowed us to immediately import 732 of these business processes directly into the tool which allowed a, a saved a heck of a lot of time inputting things manually because we were able to import straight from his system 
into uh, the convergence tool. Already the Chirwa was linked up through BizTalk and through AD, our effectively staff directory and student directory, so we were immediately again allowed to identify 232 business partners that we could start linking up to the business areas within the university. So again, all the data was there and this tool effectively, not trying to coin a phrase, but converged all that information together. So quick wins, straight out of the box, this tool, like I said, was able to solve one of our major problems, engagements. These are, this is a, sorry, this is a picture straight out of the box again. I haven't had time to tweak this yet since we went live, but effectively, this is logging these conversations. This can be either used formally within meetings or BRMs or just simply recording information that people have had within corridors, recording feedback that people have had within corridors, those kind of uh, elements that we were looking for. Uh, as with any ITSM tool, you can uh, link this to a customer, you can link this to an owner with an ICT, you can link this, link this to business units, business objectives, again through the convergence tool, but fundamentally for me, from an operations point of view, you can actually link tasks to these engagements and actually get people working on the engagements and fully report back to the requester what we've actually achieved as well as prioritizing it amongst other work or other operational work. We had an enhanced complaints process. Uh, we hadn't even considered this. We have a complaints process through the service desk, uh, but this is kind of done separately through emails and through other conversations. Again, straight out of the box, we can effectively log complaints within our ITSM solution through the convergence tool. Again, linking it to a requester, uh, it can be owned by a member of ICT, you can pipe off tasks to different individuals to work on those complaints, or alternatively, you can uh, kind of review the complaint and not take any further action. But again, it's logging everything, it's reportable, so that you can actually report internally within ICT or report back to the customer what you've, what you've done for them in regards to complaints. Already, these quick wins have allowed us to see that we can have better, more uh, open 360 degree conversations with the business. And fundamentally, it's, an it's answering the questions that we've been asking for a very long time. But it's not just about now, it's about the future. Certainly, there's in the engagement function. Uh, if edit that screen, as with a lot of things in Chirwell, uh, is editable. So we can edit that to how we want and we can have fully structured and reported on BRMs. So the, the minutes can be added into the system. You can report on what you've done to achieve those minutes and, and the customer can see the real time value of that rather than waiting for a report in the next monthly meeting. They can actually check on the progress of how things are going through the, through the usual ITSM functionality. Uh, the university at the moment because the new strategy came out this year, is the different elements of the university are creating their own KPIs. What we can do is once those KPIs have been created, we can map them into this tool and start showing the different elements of the business how we in ICT are helping them reach their KPIs. We can show to the university how ICT is bringing value to the KPIs that the other elements of the university are trying to achieve. So again, this tool will allow us to report on that, not only for the ITCT's benefit again, but for the benefit of the business as a whole. The third element there is demand management. Uh, as you saw from the start of this presentation, we're quite a small ICT team. You're, we currently have quite a robust demand management process that means we have to kind of allocate resource against business need for different elements of the university. And I believe with this tool, we can actually fundamentally allow the customers to improve to input their own demand management requests, but actually link it back to their own KPIs and ultimately the university strategy so they can tell us why they need an ICT input and we can immediately see how that is factoring into the wider university strategic ambitions rather than just being very small isolated requests that we need to match against other requests that are coming in from other areas. I think the most important thing for me is I can start linking business processes to individual support tickets. What you're seeing here is a standard sort of incident logging uh, screen. Obviously, 
request the, the description of what's going on, the service catalog elements, and there's a small little box there called Effective Business Processes and Capabilities over to the right hand side. I've typed in the word library there. This, this small little box has so much power. Effectively the service desk now, when they log a ticket, they can ask a customer what process, what are they trying to do? Okay, something's broken. Or what are they trying to achieve with that piece of technology that's broken? What, what is their end result? I've typed in the word library there. Searchable field comes up of all the business processes we've input, inputted. So if a member of the library staff, for instance, was trying to process an invoice and the finance system element wasn't working, they can actually now link that process invoice business process related to the library to that individual ticket. So then we can again report back on this and say that that, that work that you member of the service desk team, that work that you did on that ticket directly influenced that business process for the library, which in turn affected their KPI for the library, which in turn affected the university's strategic objective of X, Y, and Z. It's that simple now that we can actually now start linking up that very ground level operational work with the high level university strategic objectives. Now these things are all based in the future. These three, I can actually quite honestly say, can be implemented within the next two months. You see, we went live with Chilwell on the 31st of October. A strange date to go live, I have to admit, but we're still working through some of the uh, snags you always get with an ITSM2, sorry, ITSM tool implementation. But with what I've seen so far with the convergence tool, I believe within the next two months, certainly into the early 2017, we can have fully structured and reported BRMs. We can link to business KPIs when they're being produced by our colleagues in different areas. And fundamentally, we can start saying to our staff, this is what effect the work you're, is, you're doing is having on the business processes and ultimately achieving the university strategic objectives. So in conclusion, just to go back, 2013 we had three questions. Can we record conversations held outside traditional sources with this tool? Yes we can. Uh, can we link BRM and operational activities with this tool and the work we've done? Yes we can. And ultimately and most importantly can we evidence why we are here and I believe this tool? Yes we can. That's me, that's me complete. My, that's my email address, that's my Twitter contact, feel free to contact me. I really enjoy getting feedback and having conversations with anyone anywhere in the world around BRM, ITSM, all manner of different things. So feel free to contact me and I'll be really happy to speak to you all about this and further our, uh, give you further updates as we move into chapter four of our convergence journey.